of it. Uh, the, the church at that time did not take communion as the real presence of Jesus as the Catholic Church does. Elizabeth went on to say that she didn't know how anyone who believed what Catholics believed could have any trouble in this world. Now there's an outsider's view, right? <laughs> how can they have any trouble? They think that God is right there with them and they resume. She thought that they should be nearly as happy as the angels. And she prayed ardently to know if this was indeed the truth to which you know, God was leading her. So she saw this in the Catholics, but she wasn't ready to just you know, up and you know, become a Catholic. She really needed to know, is this where God is leading her? Another thing that impressed Elizabeth was seeing people go into churches to pray. She wrote that whenever they went out for a walk with the Felicis, they would first always stop in a church or in a convent chapel to pray. And she was struck that men did this as well. She wrote, you know, with us, a man would be ashamed to be seen kneeling, especially on a weekday. Upon her return to New York, her husband's family was taken aback by her leanings towards Catholicism. Now, they were in some of the higher social circles in New York City. Elizabeth put a lot of effort into reading about the Christian faith, about listening to what others from different denominations had to say about it, and praying that God would lead her in the direction that God desired. A very telling experience happened during this time when she attended St. Paul's Episcopal Church. She wrote to Mrs. Felici, I got in a side pew, which turned my face towards the Catholic Church in the next street and found myself 20 times speaking to the blessed sacrament there instead of looking at the naked altar where I was or minding the routine of prayers. Tears plenty and sighs as silent and deep as when I first entered your blessed church of Annunciation in Florence, all turning to the one only desire to see the way most pleasing to my God, whatever way that is. This particular experience of Elizabeth really struck me many years ago when I first read about it, and it has stayed with me ever since, and it was the first experience that came to my mind when Diane asked me about doing a talk on the Eucharist. Just this image of Elizabeth there, you know, in her church, but being like drawn, her focus being drawn to the Blessed Sacrament in the church, like across the street. Um, she really was searching for God and where God was leading her, and God was, was drawing her. <laughs> Elizabeth's decision to join the Roman Catholic Church the next year made her an outcast from most of the Seton family, as well as from the social circles to which she belonged. 